brothers and sisters? I think it's uh, to be raised a little. Sound is not reaching people. Too. Shri Mother, brothers and sisters, and seekers, people coming for Sahaj Yogi. I'm from the West, from the country of Canada. I live beside, very close to the country of the United States of America. And that country is the most powerful, the most material wealth, the most materially wealthy in the world. And the people of the United States of America are the most fearful and afraid people in the world. They are afraid to walk their own streets at night. They are afraid of an invasion from another country. They are afraid of what is inside themselves. And so it is with, with all of the Western countries. America is the worst, but with all of the Western countries, and with all of the Western peoples. And the Western peoples are not simply those who live in the West, but those who have embraced the values of the West, the values of the West, the material values, taking the material over the spiritual. And in taking the material, grasping the material, we have also grasped that fear. We're afraid of so many things. We live our lives in fear. Most of us, when we come seeking to Sahaja Yoga, some of that seeking is out of fear. What's going to happen to us if we don't find something that can take care of our problems? Maybe we're afraid of dying from some disease that we've contracted. Maybe we're afraid of somehow losing our own spirit through all the diseases spiritual diseases that are around us. So it's essential and important that Sahaja Yoga be able to give us fearlessness, courage, fortitude. In the Christian Bible, there are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the fourth gift, the gift of the heart, is the gift of courage. That gift comes when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you receive your realization. That gift comes with Sahaja Yoga. That is the gift of the goddess herself. In the Hindu tradition, you're very fortunate to have the images, the personality of Sri Jagadamba, Sri Durga. 
the all-powerful warrior goddess who was afraid of nothing because she needs to be afraid of nothing. There is nothing, no one, more powerful than the deity. We need, then, to awaken that deity in us. Now, if, if you're new here, if you come looking, if you're not a Sahaja yoga, yogi or yogini, then I invite you to look around at the Sahaja yogis and yoginis that are here. And see the gift of courage, of confidence, of fearlessness that our mother has given us. All of us have overcome things that we never would have believed we could have overcome before we came to Sahaja Yoga. We've overcome emotional problems. We've overcome physical problems. We've overcome problems that have been with us for years and years and years. For me, it was difficult to stand up before an audience and speak. Now there's no fear. All I have is confidence. If Mother asks me to speak, I can speak. Whatever's asked of me in Sahaja, I can do. And that's because I've been given something that's inside myself. And that's very important. Here we have in Sri Mataji the most important spiritual personality of this or any other age. Just like that. But you don't see Sahaja Yogis sitting, simply sitting and worshipping Sri Mataji, sitting and taking. When we do take, all we can do is take. But we worship in our action. Sahaja Yoga is not something that teaches you how to sit, how to be passive, how to be passive. It's something that teaches you how to go and do. Sahaja Yoga is and will change the entire world. It will change it in every aspect. And it will change it because we are given within each one of us those qualities that Sri Mataji represents as our ideal. We have within us now awakened and for those of you who have not yet got your realization, you will have it awakened tonight. We have within us the courage, the confidence, the ability to deal with every problem in this world. Nothing too big, nothing too insignificant. 
it can be taken care of. And we can do it. And we can only do it by surrendering the ego and by allowing God, by allowing, allowing Sri Mataji to work it out through us. Tonight, Mother will talk about the Devi and where the Devi resides in our chakra in the center heart. And all the intricacies, the importance of that quality, of that deity being awakened in us. And you must remember that it is in you personally that that courage and that confidence has to be awakened. We all know that the world has to change and we all know that it has to begin with us. And you should all know that it begins here at Mother's Feet. Today again, I must thank Mrs. Venugopala for singing such a beautiful song about the Devi. I was very much impressed the way Patrick told you that they are confident that they can solve any problem. That's what it has to be. That's the sign of a Sahaja Yogi who has reached a very great height in his understanding about himself and about others. The chakra of the Goddess lies behind the sternum bone in the spinal cord. <coughs> this chakra is placed above the bhavasagara, above the void as we call it in Sahaja Yoga. And the bridge that has to be crossed by the bhaktas, by the seekers, <coughs> is guarded by her. She is the one, she helps her children to come through that passage 
when there are negative forces trying to attack on a seeker. This chakra is placed at the back of the sternum bone, as I told you. In childhood, the antibodies are formed in the <coughs> sternum bone. They are the <coughs> warriors of the Sainikas of the day. Until the age of 12 years, they grow and multiply and ultimately they all get distributed all over the body. And a human being is made able to face any outside invasion on him. These antibodies know how to fight. They are extremely confident and they know who are their enemies. They have all these messages built in themselves. So when the anti-God element enters into the being through any process, say through food, through words, through action, through devilish people or black magic. These antibodies combine together collectively fight the invaders. Those who do not have their central heart properly developed suffer from tremendous insecurity all their lives. When they are children, you try to control them by frightening. These children later on become extremely insecure. They are afraid of darkness, they are afraid of night, some of them are afraid of everything. Because the antibodies that are built in the body are not sufficient in number, and being this center so weak, the person feels extremely insecure. Later on in life, when the child goes to the school or he tries to work, out something for the future, then also his confidence can be shaken by parents, teachers and outside people. So it is very important to understand children who are growing. In the West, they analyze everything and try to put human beings into compartments. First, the child is a child, according to them, child has no innocence and is extremely selfish. Hmm. Second part is adolescence, which they think is a very arbitrary, moody stuff. In India, we do not know that there is something like adolescence. Now these adolescent people form a group and they start criticizing or making fun of all the elders. At a very young age it starts. 
First they make fun of the teachers, then of the parents, then of all the people who are senior to them. They start becoming extremely active in their brains because they see too many televisions and things like that. And then they start behaving at a very young age in such a violent ways that one cannot imagine. I used to live about 25 miles away from London. And every time I would go to London, I would find some children doing some sort of a mischief somewhere. But one day some of them entered into my compartment and they started pulling out all the covers, thrusting their knives into the seats, opening out all the upholstery. I was just sitting and watching. So I said, now are you tired? Please sit down. What's the problem? They said, we are all very angry. I said, for what? Why are you angry? He said, we are just angry. Have you? I said, but you have to be angry for something. They were children going to good schools, definitely wearing very good clothes. And then I had to, when the train stopped, I called the ticket collector and told him that these boys have been doing all this hooliganism in the compartment and you better look at it. And he came in and he said, this is a common thing. And then somehow or other he took them out. But the only thing I felt about them is that all of them had their center heart catching. On the Kundalini, they are catching their center heart. But when they saw me, they sat down. They were quiet. They listened to me. I settled their center heart. And most of them said, we are angry with our mother. Why? Because our brothers are angry. But why your brothers are angry? Then I discovered that Freud has given these funny ideas against the mother, mother itself. Can you imagine what an anti-God activity it is? To an India, mother is the primal thing, any India. Because his sense of security lies in the mother, even if the father is hot-tempered, is angry, still they depend on the mother. Because mother knows when to get angry and when not to get angry. She has the discrimination. And she is the one who protects them. The idea of mother is completely blasted in the West. And this is the reason why the children of that country feel so insecure and when they grow they are extremely insecure. You won't believe that all the time they are polishing their grass, cleaning their house, but not even a rat enters their houses. And if they have to talk to someone, they will make a person stand outside and talk from inside especially in London, because they are literally frightened. Nobody will believe the British who ruled us are such frightened people, but they are. They are frightened of each other, they are frightened of themselves. The reason is the center heart is absolutely weak. I have told you the first reason, the family insecurities. The child does not know when he comes back from school whether his mother would be there or she would be gone. They don't have mothers who can bear a lot from the husbands and smile and show no signs of their agony to their children. 
But the mothers in that country I have seen always try to use their children from all kinds of emotional blackmail, you can call it. They try to torture the child by telling all the things the husband is doing to them and whatever is the problem they are facing with the husbands. So the child is not secured by the mother, but on the contrary, child starts giving security to mother there. At a very young age it starts and the child becomes extremely negative and left-sided. He feels that he is born in a place full of hatred, insecurity and fear. When the bhaktas are born in those countries, they are also the same way. Because they think if they have to go to a guru, the guru as known so far tortures them or extracts all the money, takes their pariksha, tests, and he sometimes leaves them high and dry on the streets. But in our country, the Goddess has taken incarnation many a times. Thousands times she has taken here her birth. Whenever the bhaktas called her, when they are pestered by the negative forces, she came on this earth to save them. These things used to be just accepted by people, but never were really accepted in their hearts. People thought these are some sorts of mythological stories, that the Goddess came on this earth and she tried to save the people. They could not believe that there could be a Shakti who could be born, who could fight these horrible Rakshasas and kill them and save her children, her Bhaktas from agony. It was too much. But today in Sahaja Yoga you have seen that when Kundalini rises and stops at the center Nabhi, you have to say the mantra of Jagadamba and the Kundalini rises. That means she resides in the center heart and when she is being worshipped, the Kundalini rises. This center has got twelve petals, but the Goddess has thousand hands and thousand eyes. She has sixteen thousand nadis to work out her different aspects of enlightenment. But the first thing she has to do through her generosity and kindness and compassion and patience, she has to suck in the sins, the papa vimochini, the sins of human beings. One of the sentences in Bible was, Wages of fear is sin. Or you can put it the other way around, the wages of sin is fear. If you have fear, you are committing a sin against yourself and against God. Because if Mother is Almighty, and she can solve all your problems, you are under her protection, then why should you have any fear? That means you don't believe that she is that powerful. When a person is frightened, this center start breathing fast, giving rhythmic instructions to all the antibodies. 
with that you feel you are getting a palpitation in the heart this palpitation is nothing but a signal to all the antibodies to fight the emergency of an attack but when somebody builds up insecurity later on in life it becomes a physical problem if they have insecurities earlier it is an emotional problem but later on in life when one develops a insecurity any kind like a wife is insecure about her husband husband is a loafer or a bad man and carrying on with other women so that motherhood of the wife is challenged and when her motherhood is challenged she may get the weakening of the center by which she may suffer quite a lot and may have even breast cancer these insecurities can be also self made imagine it people can just think about it and build up some sort of insecurities which are of no actual existence but such fears are very much more in the west because the life in the west has no mooring has no explanation whatever you ask them they'll say what's wrong a husband will say what's wrong in having a key and the wife will also say all right if he wants to have a key let him have it in india no woman would tolerate such a situation she would starve she would do everything but she will never touch a man who has a key so the basis of the strength of indian women is their sense of chastity the sense of chastity in the indian women is so great that nothing can deter them as long as they are chaste but if they are not chaste then fear settles in them very fast chastity is the strength of women and that's why those women who have fear mostly have a problem of their chastity being challenged a woman who is frightened that her chastity may be disturbed also can develop a problem with the heart chakra such women can develop breast cancers breathing troubles and other kind of frightening diseases on the emotional level also this chakra is ruined in women when they lose their only child because their motherhood is finished they feel and that is the worst thing that can happen to a woman if she is a woman but if she is not a woman she doesn't feel much and she just behaves in a very manly way and that's what i've seen in the west that women really don't much care when their children die but it is because they are not women if you are a woman you definitely feel for your children and their death but after some time such a woman comes back again and she accepts the life as it is for the sake of her husband or maybe if she has more relations or other children she becomes extremely powerful as a reaction to what has happened that's only possible if your center of heart is over 
Such women do not grudge, do not complain, are extremely serene and can bear up lots of things. They are extremely tolerant and can go to any extent to help their children, but they are never spoiling their children. They never spoil their children because they understand spoiling is much worse than beating the child. They never spoil the children nor ever pamper them and never get dominated by their children. They know I have to guide the child and I have to look after the child, so they look after all the ideals and the righteousness and the virtues of the child. And if he tries to get out of it, they go all out to win him over, back to virtue and to better life. But those people, those women who do not care for actual growth of the child may just avoid it and escape it. In the men, this chakra is caught up if they have lost their mother very early or if their mother by chance is a very cruel woman. Also this chakra can be caught up by men if they have been to wars and if they have seen frightful things in the war. Such people could be extremely emotional and could be easily be fooled by people who try to win over their emotions. What is to be done to improve this chakra? In Sahaja Yoga we have many techniques by which we can improve this chakra and get your confidence back. As Patrick has said that he never used to speak and I have seen many actors who act very well and when they came to my program, they said, Mother, please don't ask us to speak because we just don't know how to speak. We can act, but we cannot speak to people. And I tried once and twice and they ended up with two, three sentences mumbled down and sat down. I found out all of them had this chakra very badly damaged. Perhaps they lacked the love of their mothers, perhaps they did not love their mothers, or perhaps maybe that they did not understand the value of virginity in women. So those men who try to look at every woman who passes by, those men who try to have lusty eyes, can also develop this center very badly and lots of problems can come through this center. One of the problems that comes through this could be lung cancer. But I've seen this center is very badly affected also by certain negligence in life. Like some people have a habit of having a very hot bath and then coming out of that hot bath and entering into some cool place. Such people will catch this center very badly and they will have a problem. Then there is another thing which is, looks very simple, but many people have a habit, in, especially summers, to wear a one single kurta or single shirt and not the undershirt. This is also not proper. A man must always have something under his shirt, otherwise when it starts perspiring, he can get trouble into this heart center. This heart center is caught up by various emotional problems in human beings. Husband and wife, if they all the time quarrel, they are always quarreling in the house, Especially if the mother is very dominating, the child develops this center. And if the father is very dominating, the child develops this, the heart itself. So it is very important that husband and wife should never quarrel in the presence of their child. 
Now there resides in this center the incarnation of the goddess who came on this earth thousands of time and she resides there for your protection. But first of all, you have to be worthy of her protection. When she came on this earth, many a times, you know, her body was made by various forces as if she was like a bubble and the bubble was covered by so many things added on to that. And that's how she got lots of things from various uh, gods. Like her hair she got from Yama, the god of death. Her nose she got from uh, the god of wealth, Kubera. And her ear she got from the Pavana, that is air. Like that, her body was made specially by the essences of these great deities who donated their essences to the goddess to be equipped to do these multifarious activities. Now the first activity, as I told you, of the goddess is to save her children from the negative forces. So she looks extremely mild, sweet, but she can be extremely violent in the sense she can kill or crush anyone who tries to overpower her children. Ati Saumya Ati Raudha. These two temperaments exist only in the Goddess because she is the mother and at any cost she wants to save her child. Also towards her child, when he goes beyond a point of understanding, when he shows no sense of discipline, then also Goddess can pull him down by certain methods that she adopts. Now first of all is that she gives all that is needed to remove the fear from the mind of sadhakas. Secondly, she cures the scent by giving birth to additional antibodies in the body and by vibrating the tired antibodies to act in a way that they can fight back again. Even in day-to-day -day life she may establish her existence by showing lots of uh, miracles to her children. We had a lady coming to see me and she was rather late. And when she came back, I asked her what was the problem. She said, no, there was no problem, but my, my bus fell down about 20, 30 feet down and the thing rolled down and fell on the ground with all the four legs intact. And all of us in the bus were sick. But the driver got upset and he ran away. So somebody who was uh, in the car, who knew how to drive, came down and he start, switched on the car and the car started moving. And we came back then to Bombay. So on the way they started asking, there must be some saint sitting here. Otherwise, how can we be protected? Only a saint can protect us like this. And she was wearing my ring. Oh, they said, this is Mataji's disciple. They all started falling at her feet, saying, oh, you have saved us, you have saved us. So there are many miracles that take place in your life. When you see an accident taking place, suddenly you find the accident is over. There was one fellow who was a journalist called Marathi. He and his friend, another journalist, were coming from Lonaula down and it's a very big slopey road, ghat, and their brakes fell. And the, and the driver said, now the brakes are fell and you take God's name. And they started remembering their mother. And suddenly they saw a big truck coming ahead. They were about to bang onto that, they closed their eyes. And God knows what happened. They 
opened the eyes and saw the truck was going upward and they were moving forward without any difficulties. And they were amazed how it has happened, as if somebody has lifted their car and put before the truck and they have been saved. And the driver also closed his eyes and took the name of the mother. It is possible. It has happened with so many people that they do not know how it works out. So one has to believe that we have the mother within ourselves, in our heart, and if she is awakened, she is going to look after us. She is going to give all the protection that is needed, and there is nothing to be frightened of anything. But you can imagine, as Patrick has said clearly, that they were quite frightened, and I know they are. Even English language is like that. All the time they will say, I am afraid, I am afraid, I have to go. What is there to be afraid if you have to go? You better go. <laughs> I am afraid if I am doing… They are all the time jittery like that. And so jittery and when they talk, you know, they are so frightened that sometimes you feel nervous with them, that you, you don't know how to approach them the way they are nervous. And one of the reasons why they are nervous is that because they plan too much, think too much, analyze too much, and then ego settles down into their brains and ultimately covers the heart. Because their ego covers their heart, they get a fright. Actually it so happens that if you become ego-oriented, you start seeing yourself through. Because when you are at a level, you can even see your ego very clearly. And then you get frightened of other people because you think they too also must be having the same type of ego, ego and you are really frightened of them. It is very common also in the East, now in India I should say that supposing you have to go to a government office, be careful. Uh, anybody, even a chaprasi can shout at you for nothing at all. They develop a system of barking all the time, just one barking. The reason is they bark at you because they themselves are insecure. A chaprasi is insecure of his boss, his boss is insecure of his boss, his boss is insecure of his boss. Ultimately the minister is afraid of the voters and the voters are afraid of the minister. It's such a vicious circle. So the whole system works out into such a terrible insecurity that you don't understand what is there to bark at, what is there to shout at. And then a kind of a identification with the falsehood is built up so much that you are no more a human being. You are either a secretary or you are an undersecretary or a joint secretary, I don't know who is higher, who is lower. And then you have uh, some other secretaries and then you have clerks and this and that and that and, and you are that, you are nothing else but that. So because you are that, you must have these horns and you must shout at people, otherwise nobody is going to believe that you are something. So it is such an identification that develops into human beings, that too because of this heart not being developed properly. Because if your heart is developed properly, then you are a human being because you know your mother has given you the birth and you are a human being. It is not, there's no need to have any fear from another human being who is also a child of your mother. So there has to be no fear about it. But the trouble is that when human beings uh, start wearing anything, supposing they wear a suit, immediately they start speaking in English. As soon as they wear pajamas, they start speaking in uh, Hindi language or say dhoti Hindi language and pajamas, they might start giving galis. So it is a kind of a very superficial identification human beings develop because there is no depth in the heart. If they had that depth, that mooring in the heart, then they would not develop these superficial things and as a result of that they are frightened because they know they are superficial, others are superficial, they have got beard, we have got beard. So they'll pour, if I'm going to pull his beard, he might pull my beard as well. Such a fear exists among human beings. And then another thing, another steps come into the minds of the people that why not pull his legs to go up? This is the third category of debasement. 
if you are the child of the same mother, how can you go higher than anybody else? You will remain always the child of the mother. How can you go higher than any other child in the eyes of mother? You cannot. On the contrary, if you try to do such tricks, the mother will punish you. And this is the second thing that mother does, is to punish her children. Yes, she punishes. In very sweet ways, first of all. For example, if the child is not eating and troubling, she said, all right, you don't want to eat, all right, don't eat today. That's a very simple way of punishing children. But then she says, all right, you want to have, the way you want to have, go ahead. Like I tell them not to do such a such thing, it's not good. For example, I told them that don't uh, take the flats uh, just from the beginning and let the, all the surgeries stay with other surgeries. But the organizers thought it better to take the flats, whatever may be the reason, because they are very wise organizers. But you see, mother says something very simple, but it has a meaning, one must know. And they arranged it that way. So half of the people just protested that, no, we are going to see, stay with some Sahaja Yogis, we want to be with them, so they were accommodated. The others were British, you know, nowadays are on the other side of the mood. They are very, very tolerant. And they said, all right, if we are not arranged, we'll stay in the flats. So they stayed in the flats. But what happened? It rained and rained and rained and rained and they could not arrange their food even under the uh, roof they had built. So they had to shift all of them to other places and all of them had to stay with other surgeries as told by mother. If they had listened to the mother, they would have saved some money as well as they would have saved some trouble and there would have been no problem at all. That's how little tricks here and there are played by mother, just to convince the children that you have been stupid. <coughs> now, there are so many things like that which mother can play and her playfulness is very important in life because if she is severe with the children, they will run away. If she is like any other guru, the gurus, the sadgurus also, they used to beat their disciples. They used to hang them by a string. You don't know how the gurus treat their disciples. Some of them take lots of money from their disciples and some of them take lots of uh, things from the disciple. They want complete surrendering and they make them subservient. They really torture the lives of their children or, or their disciples, we should say. But the mother doesn't want to do that. So she plays little tricks here and there and tries to correct the children. Now I'll give you an example of a guru whom I met about five, six years back. He came from Amarnath to a small village, small district place near Bombay, where a Sir Yogini was staying. And he sent his disciple who was staying in that place to see that Sir Yogini. And she, he went and he told that, you see, my guru is coming and he wants to see Mataji. And he has told me that only Adi Shakti will clear out my Agya Chakra. So she couldn't understand. She said, what is your guru doing? Oh God, don't talk about him. He held his ears. Don't take his name. Oh, you can't know how, what sort of person he is. He said, but why doesn't he open your Agya Chakra? Mother uh, will be coming, but of course, why shouldn't you do that? He said, no, 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 no. He said, only she should open, nobody else should open it. And he sent me to, to this place about five years back saying that in the sixth year Adi Shakti will be coming and she will open your Agnya Chakra. Now can you believe it? Poor fellow suffering from that horrid Agnya Chakra was <laughs> suffering when this Guru had come. So he came to see me and he told me, Mother, my Guru has come and he wants to see you. So I went to see him. <laughs> And this guru was sitting down there with a big temper, you see, the nose was all bloating. Of course, when I went there, he touched my feet and everything. 
and then he called one very bad name to this thing. Did he go? Did he touch your feet? Was he all right? Was he behaving all right? I said he was all right, but I can't understand. Why did you not open his Agya Chakra? He said, let him go to hell now. I am not going to open his Agya Chakra. Who opened my Agya Chakra? Why should I open his Agya Chakra? <laughs> so I said, this is not good. I, I should open. Yes, yes, you will because you are a mother. I am not a mother. So uh, he the, he went inside uh, and the, uh, the s- disciple told me, Mother, he hanged me by legs on top of this well. For three days I was hanging there. I said, for what? Why did he hang you there? You said, you said, she said, don't ask anyone. Then he came in. Yes, yes, I hanged you. Yes, I will, again. So I said, why did you hang him? He was smoking. Because he was smoking, I hanged him there. I said, now smoke. And I was putting him down, up and down. I said, I am smoking you. And he tortured him like this. I said, but why should you do such a horrible thing? He says, otherwise, how will you discipline? I am not a mother. I don't know how to discipline. This is the only way I can discipline him. And he said, you go on spoiling him, but I am going to discipline him like that. All right, I said, you shut up now, just now, don't talk. But let me put his agya right. And I took about two minutes to put his agya right. I said, his agya is all right now. Uh, then he said, did he promise you that he will not smoke? I said, he did not. So he said, you better ask him the promise, otherwise I will not allow him to eat his food for three days. <laughs> I said, Baba, this is a horrible guru. God saved his disciple from this guru. <laughs> but you see, what he was meaning, that there should be a discipline <coughs> in a disciple. There has to be a complete understanding that he is the Guru. But he said, look at these people, how are they? They take liberties with you, they trouble you so much, uh, they try to be funny with you, still you don't say anything to them. I said, I don't have to say. I know how to correct them. So this is the quality of the mother who can correct people. She knows who doubts them, she knows who thinks, uh, who thinks wrong about her, she knows who thinks rightly about her, she knows everything. If she knows everything, she doesn't have to worry, she is completely secured about it and she doesn't have the insecurity of the Guru that one day the disciple will misbehave or anything because she knows how to correct. The other day I met one gentleman, a surgeon, and he came to me and he started explaining to me, Mother, you don't know this happened. I said, no, I don't know anything, isn't it? You think I don't know anything? He said, yes, Mother, how will you know? I said, I said, I, I, I'll tell you one thing, that you play, play a lot of cricket in your childhood until you came to Sahaja Yoga. Yes, that's true, how do you know? I said, that's how I know. <laughs> so I know or not? Then you know. Then she, he accepted, all right, you know, Mother, all about me. I don't know how you know. But she's Avalokiteshwari. She's the one who sees everything. She, she knows, somehow or other, she knows. How she knows, that cannot be explained at this stage. But she knows each and everything what you are doing if she wants to. And the third quality of a mother is that she is a Mahamaya. She talks like you, sits like you, uh, she will behave like you, uh, everything will be just like you. And you won't be able to make out the depth of this woman who is a Mahamaya. Because she plays such tricks on you and such things in such a beautiful way that you cannot make it. You think that you are all right. You go to a person uh, and you tell anything you feel like about mother, you try to do anything and ultimately you discover that everything she knows. And when you discover that, gradually you start understanding, then when she knows everything about me, I better be all right. And how does she know? Because she decides in your center heart. She knows everything what you have been doing, what you are doing, what you are thinking of doing. So she, what does she do? Sankalpa vikalpa karoti. Whatever sankalpas you are making, she'll make it for. If you say, no, I have decided, Mother, to do this and I'm going to do it, it will fail. You have to judge yourself as a real son of your mother. As in Bombay, or any place we tried to get some land, nobody could get it. We tried, 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 you see, they said black market money, bribery, corruption. I said, nothing doing, I'm not going to do any of those things. So they said, then Mother, how are we to achieve it? I said, you will achieve it, don't you worry. 
Then they started saying she's not practical, she's this, she's that, and everybody who said turned out to be very impractical. Ultimately, I said, when you will be ready for Sahaja Yoga, then you will get the lion and the ashram. Because once you start an ashram and have some money there, you will find all kinds of groups will join together and will make fun with the money that has been collected. There won't be any proper arrangement, no proper discipline. And that is why the time has to be given for children to learn through making errors, through making mistakes and understanding what mistakes we are making and how we have to correct it. Once they start understanding it, then it is very easy, very easy to communicate to them what they are supposed to do, what they have done is wrong and how to correct it. But as long as they think they are very wise, as long as they think they are extremely nice people and that they are on their own, Mother says, all right, go ahead, doesn't matter. Now you must know that Mother has saved people from that Bhavasagara with such great difficulty. It's not easy to do that. It's a tremendous task. Sometimes to raise the Kundalini of thousands of people, I feel like uh, a big mountain I have to raise. It's terrible. But people on the whole who are not yet corrected think they are obliging me by taking realization. This is a very common feeling with human beings and I feel like laughing at the stupidity of the ego that they are obliging me by taking this um, realization. And the way they talk is all on this terminology. I came, I was sitting there for three days, I never got realization, as if I have done some criminal act. So the whole attitude of a person gradually changes towards the mother and he starts thinking that she is here for my well-being and my well-being is her only concern about me. Somehow she'll achieve my realization. She's working very hard and I must cooperate. I must learn to cooperate. It is for my hita, for my good she's doing it and I should try to understand that it is for my good. When such an attitude is developed, it is much easier to establish a disciple. But this disciple is different from a son or a daughter because mother is a guru, no doubt. Mother is a guru from the very beginning you are born. But for a mother it is very difficult to be as harsh as these gurus are, not at all, nowhere near them. One cannot beat them in the harshness. But it is for you in your own wisdom to understand how to behave, how to ask for realization, how to change your attitude. Because if you think too much of yourself and you try to show off, she'll say, yes, yes, you are very great, really, you are very, very great, you know, till you suddenly discover that you have developed two big horns on your head and now you are good for nothing, then she will say, all right, now come along. You have developed this disease, I'll put you right. So better not do all those things. I, on one side, she is willing to go all out to save you from all troubles. Like supposing you have some heart trouble, if you have some any other trouble, she'll go all out to save you. It's not easy to cure anybody's heart. People think that mother has cured us, so it's all right, take it for granted. It's not so. When you get Sahaja Yoga, you'll be surprised that when you try to cure one person, you'll fall sick for three days. It's not easy to cure. And those people who cure sometimes do it through boots also. Those who have boots can also cure because they themselves are boots. What can happen to the boots? They cure people but put one boot into the patient in such a way that that patient becomes a slave. And such bootish people can be curer, faith healers or anything like supraconscious, all sorts of people. But when they cure, any person be sure they are putting another serious, more serious problem into They do not cure you, really. They actually are putting some <coughs> diseases into you or into the patients. It's a very risky game. But a Sahaja Yogi, if he tries to cure somebody, because he cannot put somebody else in that vacuum, he gets a problem himself. He sucked it. So, 
my advice is always for every surgery that you should not cure anyone. There is no need for you to cure by touching. You should use my photograph, you can distribute my photograph, tell people how to cure themselves. But don't cure anybody because you will have problems, because you are not a boot and you will be hit hard. So be careful about it. Don't try to cure anyone, only use the photograph. By using the photograph, the Shraddha will be there, the person will be steady and you will be all right. Uh, like yesterday we had some patient here and some people felt the compassion you know, for that and they all caught up. There was no need to feel compassion. Have you got more compassion than I have? What was the need to bring the patient here? There was no need, but they both got caught up. So there is no need to bring any patients to me. That's not the way to behave. Never bring any patient. If there's a patient, leave them alone. Tell them, Mother will look after you. We have nothing to say. You, There's a photograph. You must use the photograph. Get your treatment done with the photograph and you get cured. Otherwise, first thing that will happen to you that you'll catch on your center heart. Because that's not your job. You are not to do that. If you try to do it, Actually, it is your ego sometimes that makes you think that you should cure a person, sometimes. And when you try to do through your ego, you get into trouble. Not that you cannot cure, you can. But you have to be of that level when you try to cure a person. You do not become a supraconscious personality, means you don't become ego-oriented. But they do, ultimately they are all of them, those who have tried, to cure others and do like that, they have gone out of Sahaja Yoga completely, becoming just mediums. They have become mediums, horrible people. When they talk on the phone, I feel somebody is pouring poison into my ears. They are so horrid that you can't imagine. So it is important for people who get Realization not to indulge into any curing because they will develop the center heart when they Center heart can be developed in countries where there's all fear, people are frightened. It can be developed by other things in, by which people are frightened. Reading books of bad gurus and reading the books about shocking things like many people who read the Kundalini's book have got center heart because they are so frightened about the Kundalini. <laughs> Anything that frightens you if you read can make your heart very, very weak and dangerous. Now we have two other sides to this center heart, is the mother's heart, is her own brother, is Vishnu, takes incarnation as Sri Rama on the right hand, who we think is the mother, father, who is looking after his children. So that is the father and this is the mother, though here the father and the mother are in two aspects, that the mother is the uh, sister of the father, and father is the mama of the disciple, of the sadhakas. The mama is a greater father than a father, as you all know. And so this uncle, who is the uh, incarnation of Sri Narayana, looks after the protected uh, disciples of the mother. He gives that father's understanding to the children because at this stage the Father, God Almighty, is not known, who is Shiva. So this uncle looks after the children till they are grown up enough to meet their father. And that is how we can say that Parvati or Uma or Devi she comes to her mother's place, Maika, and resides in this center heart. And there her brother protects her children. When she gives realization to children or gives them second birth, then this mama looks after the sister's children and helps them to build up the security of a father. So the right side 
of every human being represents the fatherhood the fatherhood and the fatherhood of a man is very important if this center is spoiled or if there's something wrong with it then you get asthma as a disease asthma is only caused by this center being spoiled or some other combinations with this center asthma is very common among girls and boys and the relationship with the father or the understanding of the father or your own fatherhood is not all right you get this trouble of asthma and for that one has to ask the questions to the sadhakas what sort of a father you have and one gentleman came and asked me why everybody is asking me what sort of a father you have what sort of a everybody ask me what about your father what about your father what has my father to do with me actually everybody feels the right heart and they have to ask about the father because father decides in the right heart and the principle of fatherhood if it is spoiled if there is a problem with the principle of fatherhood then you get this problem and many other problems uh, which i do not want to discuss now at length but you can understand a person who has no father how diffident he is and how he behaves and also such people those who have not known a father can become very wayward licentious or permissive or could be very much uh, secretly licentious the people who lose their father do not have that lacking uh, lacking uh, they lack in that discipline that the father gives them. or could be such uh, people could take to a very remorse and unhappy life or they could be very hard on their children or could be extremely kind and spoil the children it could be anyway so it has both the reactions uh, either uh, too much of love giving or too much of strictness it can be anything or a person could be uh, of this kind may be very strict in childhood and could be extremely lavish in old age it's a it is a very imbalanced personality so the person who has no father has to know that his father is shri rama he should not worry about anything he is a one with one uh, arrow he can kill any number of people so he should have no fear at all about his father not being there or father being dead or something happening like that on the contrary if the father is dead is better to tell him not to worry about uh you and that you are all right so that you leave your father in peace and ask him to take his birth than to bind him to this earth this is the right heart and the left heart is the mother actually your own mother also ever it is that is the motherhood in the sense that if your mother has been extremely unkind and extremely funny or your relationship with mother is bad then know that there's something wrong on the left hand uh, which is indicated in you so these two points are very important in human beings if a sajogi just decides that i have a father and a mother god almighty is my father and my mother then these problems can be easily solved but in sa yoga it is not what you think that works out it does not like in the car if you sit down and think that i am going to cannot place you won't move you have to move your hands in the same way in sa yoga you have to move your hands clear your chakras move them higher and put them up it's not what you think is important in sa yoga not at all you may think uh, that i am doing very well in sa yoga i am very good but it's not so it is what you actually achieve your ascent is the point so as in the car as i told you you cannot just sit down and think and do the job in the same way you have to run this machine and you have to see that you get all this movement there should be gati in you otherwise there is no sense in just talking about sa yoga thinking about sa yoga and uh, convincing yourself that you are a great sa yogi it is how you manifest it is the point which very few people understand very very few people understand that it has to be manifesting it has to be karyan with it is not just talk 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 morning till evening even when i am talking now i am opening your heart center 
I'm working it. Even I'm talking also, I'm opening it. It's working. You will see your heart chakra is open by the time I finish my lecture. It is so, because I know how to do it. When I talk, I'm just watching where the chakras are catching, what's happening, and I'm catching all these points and touching it. I'm trying to open it. And that's how it should be. That even when you talk, it should be karyami. Even when you are quiet and raising your hands, it should be karyami. Whatever you do, you should be karyami. Even if you glance at anyone, it should be karyami. It should not be just a uh, kind of a jabbering that we do sometimes about surgery. The greatest fear human beings have that they think they have done lots of mistakes. And these mistakes are too many and they can never get realization, they'll be doomed, they'll be going to hell. This is not true at all. Nobody is going to go to hell if they, you do not want to. If you want to stop it, you can stop it, the time has come, you are going to be blessed and blessed forever. So may God bless you. Today's lecture I have given you uh, in a way that you should understand the importance of confidence, but not by saying, I am confident. Because when you say outwardly, you are actually egoistical. But when you say in your vibrations, then you are confident. May God bless you. Today I am sorry I have to go for a dinner tonight and I won't be able to spare much time today for touching feet because yesterday my brother came home for dinner and I reached 11 o'clock so he went away without eating food. Again today he is coming so I hope today you will excuse me for my brother, because after all I must look after your mama also sometimes. <laughs> May God bless you. Tomorrow I'll talk to you about Vishuddhicha, uh, which I will start exactly at 6.30. I hope you'll make it convenient to be here at exactly at 6.30. We start our program tomorrow exactly at 6.30. अब पैर नहीं छूने का कहा तो पैर छूने लग गए जब नहीं कहा तो सुनना चाहिए दोज हु डू नॉट ओबे सफर यू शुड नॉट वंस आई हैव सेड इट व्हाट इज देयर ओबीडियंस व्हाई इज इट डिफिकल्ट व्हाई इज इट डिफिकल्ट टू ओबे इट इज जस्ट ट्राई एंड ओबे एंड यू विल फाइंड इट ओबीडियंस गिव्स यू द रियल कॉन्फिडेंस इज ओबीडियंस जस्ट ओबीडियंस जस्ट ट्राई जस्ट ट्राई टू ओबे इज वेरी सिंपल and said, today no touching of feet is all right. For Indians it is difficult. But if in English, if I say, you touch my feet, they will not. They say, who are you? <laughs> you laugh at them and they laugh at you. That's what it is. <laughs> so today you become Englishmen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> वहाँ का कैंसिल कर दिया कीर्ति नगर अच्छा वो वहाँ मंदिर में कुछ बहुत बैठे हुए थे उन्होंने ना कर दिया तो यहीं रख लें पांच का चार तक का है